All right, hello, and welcome to Camel Finance. I'm your boy Camel, and best news ever, Jim Cramer has said, hold your nose and sell, and brace for a possible market downturn. So this is the bottom indicator. The bottom is in, we are going up, guaranteed. Always do the inverse of what this guy says. Joking aside though, JPM has issued a statement saying the Fed will slow the pace of its rate hikes to 50 basis points at the December meeting and pause after only one more 25 basis point hike. Is this something we can trust? I don't know. I am inherently distrusting of almost everything, but I would not be at all surprised to see this. And if you've been watching the channel, you'll know exactly why. Bitcoin's hash rate has just set a new world record. It's 9% higher than the prior all-time high, which was set just a few days ago. I have no doubt that we have serious, highly efficient government and oil company enterprises entering the mining game at scale as we speak. We can say this with confidence. They have been priming this since April that they were going to start to price commodities like oil in Bitcoin. And it is no coincidence that they are entering this space at scale right as we are about to enter a bull market for Bitcoin. South African retailer Pick and Pay is going to accept Bitcoin in 39 stores. So this is continued adoption and we continue to see continued adoption. Kids in South Africa, here they are using Bitcoin to purchase their groceries. So you can see they grab some groceries, make their way to the till scan a QR code on their smartphone, hit the send button. And as quickly as a tap, I would argue even faster than a tap of a debit or credit card, they have paid for their groceries via lightning. Look at this, this is fantastic. At the same time, Visa is launching Bitcoin and crypto debit cards in Singapore in partnership with crypto.com. So again, more adoption, more usability, this thing is taking off and the price is about to start catching up the fundamentals. The remittance giant MoneyGram now allows US users to buy Bitcoin on its mobile app. Do you see the theme here? This thing is not slowing down. This thing is only getting faster. Here's another example of Bitcoin Lightning payments. You can see tap and done. As quickly as that, this is incredible to see. I've got here four clips that are under two minutes each. of The world's greatest investors explaining why they hold Bitcoin. Let's go. You know, maybe a frame but people will pay millions or tens of millions of dollars for it and it, so it comes down at the very basic level for supply and demand so bitcoin is the only economic entity where um, the supply is unaffected by the demand so even with gold if gold which is eighteen hundred dollars today if gold goes to eighteen thousand dollars there will be a lot more gold mined because mines that are unprofitable will, will become profitable and so gold which which accretes today the production of gold is about equal about one and a half to two percent of the total value per year. And that's the same uh, accretion that Bitcoin has currently. Uh, that, but this year, 2022, I think will drop below 1.5% on that. So only only 21 million Bitcoin can ever be created or close to it. It doesn't matter if Bitcoin is 100,000 or, or 20 million, there's only gonna be that many of them. So um, th all you have to really believe is that the demand for Bitcoin will grow faster than one and a half percent you know, over the next number of years and the price inexorably will go up. So I, I, I've only recently been allowing myself to be described as a Bitcoin bull. I, I used to tell people, they say, oh, you're a Bitcoin bull, you, you own a lot of Bitcoin. I'm like, I do own a lot of it, but I'm actually a Bitcoin observer and I'm observing its trajectory as a new technology and comparing it to the trajectories of things like uh, the printing press or the steam engine or the railroads or the automobile or electricity. And, and it's following that very, uh, uh, not, not predictable, because it's not predictable certainly in the early, early days a well understood path for the adoption of new technologies. I think that cryptocurrencies in particular, I think blockchain's great, um, but let's call it a digital gold. Right. I think a digital gold, which would be a Bitcoin type of thing, is, a, um, is something that probably in the interest of diversification of finding uh, an alternative to gold, has a little part, a little spot relative to gold and then relative to other assets. But I think that we're in an environment that we're now going to ask, what is the new money? Okay, so meaning, fiat currencies. And when we look at currencies, it, you hold currencies in the form of a debt. Right. And so when I say cash is trash, what I mean is that all currencies um, in relationship to the euro, in relationship to the yen, all of those currencies, like in the 1930s, right. will be currencies that will go down in relationships to goods and services. And we are in an environment where we're going to be looking at what are those assets? What is the type of money that you could move between countries that's a medium of exchange and a storehold of wealth? And that's, so that's what I'm talking about. And I'm saying that Bitcoin has made a tremendous achievement over the last 11 years of being at it. It's a tiny percentage of my portfolio. I think the Bitcoin people get too preoccupied with it. The gold 
gold bugs get too preoccupied with it, and I think you have to look at the broader set of assets that serve that purpose. When we do lose the, the status as a world reserve currency, it's going to be hard to find a replacement because in China, it's gonna, there's a lack of trust in the currency of a foreign dictatorship, uh, obviously, and then Europe's a mess. Your best guess is that a crypto-derived ledger system will be invented and that that will become the reserve currency of the world? Okay, let's not get too carried away. <laughs> I, know, I know, but I, that, that just sizzles with, you know, sell the stake. It is, uh, go ahead. I, I, knew, I knew crypto was going to come up in this show, okay, so it, it's okay. <laughs> but um, look, one of the lines about the dollar we've all heard 100 times the last 10 years is we're the cleanest, dirty shirt in the room. There's no alternative. And it's true, that is what uh, has been our strongest case for the dollar, is Europe is a complete mess. Um, who's going to trust the Chinese so it can't be them? And I've been groping, well, how does that resolve itself? Well, you probably don't remember this, Joe, but five or six years ago, I said that, that crypto was a solution in search of a problem. And that's why I didn't play crypto the first wave, because we already had the dollar. What do we need crypto for? Well, the problem has been clearly identified. It's Jerome Powell and the rest of the world's central bankers. There's a lack of trust. So sort of groping for an answer for a central case at best guess, and it's hard to make a forecast three months from now, much less 15 years yep. from now. I think the most likely the most likely replacement would be some kind of ledger system. I've still got a, a very minor allocation. I've always had a small allocation to it. I think, you know, if you think about every decade, the 70s were the decade of inflation. The 80s was a decade of kind of boom bust, huge swings in dollar volatility. The 90s was equitization, the dot-com bubble. The aughts was the mortgage bubble and the great financial crisis. Uh, the teens were the peak of globalization and probably the peak of uh, central bank experimentation with monetary policy, right? Uh, the 20s, I'm afraid, are going to be that period where we really focus on debt dynamics country by country, fiscal deficits, and the need to run certainly fiscal policy in a way that gives people confidence in the long run value of the currency. And the problem that we've had really for the last 12 years is that we've We've, we've done this massive experimentation with monetary policy where we suppressed yields and we did this massive experimentation on the fiscal side during the pandemic. And so my guess is the 20s are going to be just the opposite of both. We're already seeing that right now from the central bank. So there you have it. If the best investors on the planet think it's good to buy Bitcoin, then maybe you should consider it. Meanwhile, today is, of course, Fed Day and the Fed cannot get any more hawkish than Jackson Hole. It's all priced in. Is this the case? Is it all priced in? I know there's still a lot of bearishness out there, but we're going to get an answer today. And I'm looking forward to that answer so that we can move forward. Investors are extremely bearish on Europe. They're bearish on everything, as far as I can tell. European stocks relative to the US have reached a level never seen since 2000. Is it time to take the other side? Well, again, if you've been watching the channel, you'll know I have taken the other side. I think it is time to take the other side. The Bitcoin money flow needs to reverse before there can be an uptrend. But we are currently at this point for Bitcoin, as you can see right here. So there you have it. At the same time, congratulations to the Bitcoin bulls. Why? Because Bitcoin, as of last month, at the end of October, closed its first bullish monthly engulfing candle since the top at 69K. I think this is very significant because also a bullish engulfing monthly candle for October was closed on the Dow futures, as you can see here. Have we started this move to the top? I think so. And lastly, I just want to show you that the Nifty 50 has been leading. And as you can see here, it's broken out and gapped higher. This is significant. This is on a weekly chart. Make no mistake, this is significant. Oscillators turning up, ready for another leg higher above bullish territory, as you can see. So I think there's a very good chance. There's a very, very good chance here that we can start to attack new highs. We need to get the Fed meeting out of the way. We need to allow a day or two for dust to settle. But make sure you come back and I will give my analysis once we've had a statement from the Fed and we'll take it from there. In the meantime, if you need any technical analysis, go and see yesterday's video. All of that still holds. Nothing's changed. I have made no updates to positions and I will make sure I update you if I do. Subscribe if you want to see that, turn the notifications on. Drop a like on the video today. And in the meantime, take care. Be safe. All the best from me. Cheers. Bye.